Welcome back, everybody. If you know my channel, you know that uh, I like to build 3D printed stuff, and not really just stuff, but machines. And uh, the machine I've been working on lately is this machine, which uh, makes ViscoFuse. But really what I wanted to talk about is this stuff, which I've only just discovered. And uh, for a maker, this is pretty amazing stuff. It's called round polyurethane belting. And uh, I bought this for, both of these I think were 10 bucks or something. This is three millimeter, this is two millimeter. And it uh, comes in a big long length and you can make a belt any size you like. And it's really quite simple to make the belt. I mean, I've never failed. You basically melt the ends and stick them together. And then I kind of, when it's not so bad, it's going to burn me. I adjust it a little bit. <clears throat> and so I made this belt as a good example. That's the join there, the weld. Um, yeah, I, I haven't, uh, you know, on the first try it succeeded. And this thing is surprisingly durable at the weld. I mean, it's it's not really going to break at the weld. So the interesting thing about that is <clears throat> you can make any size belt you like. And when you print uh, a V profile pulley, uh, this works really well. Um, so just to show you something I tried that didn't work out was I tried making pulleys that were built for rubber bands and that worked pretty well you know a flat flat belt so a flat pulley and really for a very light duty uh, implementation this could be really great because it's super easy problem is that a you can't get rubber bands any length you want they're just sort of come in whatever length you've got and the other thing is they are very pliant you know, compared to that other one, this one's very pliant. And so the problem is your gear ratios are thrown off because if you're, if you're pulling this one, you know, this is going to stretch and this one is not going to stretch. And so you lose the uh, ratio that you're shooting for. So anyway, a V pulley and this round belt seems like a really great technology for makers. And I, I don't really see don't really find a lot of information about it on you know maker spaces but let me let me show you how I've used this so this machine is pretty pretty straightforward sort of stuff it's all just rotating stuff the the trick here is that we're rotating this at a, a low rate and we're rotating this at a high rate in the opposite spin so this is reverse the direction of spin. And then we're, this one's spinning quickly in, in the same direction. And then down here, there's some reductions to turn this at a very low rate. And let me just show you how that works. So I'm gonna just turn this by hand. This thing's a work in progress, but you might be able to see that things are all moving in a relative speed, including reversed direction. So that's really easy. I just made uh, V pulleys that uh, that fit this this V pulley here that uh, that drives that doesn't kind of freewheel is mainly secured by you know a nut uh, two nuts that are compressing it onto that shaft. So no problem. Here it's a belt so one of the things you can do is reverse direction just by um, the belt uh, crossing over itself and the wear there seems to be not much to worry about so that's pretty cool if you were you could do this all with gears but reversing the direction with gear you'd have some other intermediate gear anyway it's more complicated this is also more forgiving, right? Because the distance, the separation of things is... You could just make a longer belt if you needed to. You don't need to have gears that mesh perfectly. Um, the other really interesting thing here is you can see this belt is 
effectively captive on the machine, right? If you if you were trying to add a belt, you'd have to take something apart because these belts are captive. This belt is free, right? I could put it on from the top. Um, but the interesting thing about the belting is uh, these I welded in place, right? Which is super handy. So I didn't have to disassemble the machine to replace the belt. I could just get my little flame up here and I, I melted it right here. And so you can, you can replace a captive belt very easily, or you could make a machine that, uh, that had captive belts and then had no way to, uh, to take on another belt. So it's an interesting feature of the, of this belting. So anyway, um, if you're interested at all in more general uh, drive with these kind of things, you'll find a link below to a library, an open SCAD library, where you can make your own uh, custom pulleys of any size, any diameter. Uh, that's open SCAD. It's um, parametric. Parametric, uh, the whole thing is sort of compiled and uh, Thingiverse has a customizer, so you don't even need the software to get any V-pulley you want in STL form. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this machine I'm going to do a video about once I've got it actually running. If you're interested in this machine before then, uh, the source is in Git, so you can look there for the OpenSCAD source and STLs of these parts. All right, this is this has gone on plenty long, but uh, I highly recommend inexpensive, versatile polyurethane round belting. I didn't have to get to this one. Uh, this is way overkill for something like like this particular machine. But it's interesting to note that they've got these in like way larger sizes. So for belting that is not uh, super demanding. For power transmission that's you know moderate uh, moderate amounts of power these round belts are awesome okay subscribe or don't uh, thanks for watching